Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. So today's second video, which gets us to the 24th of August today. Uh, so we're going into the final week of August, really, with the week 10 day updates. Now, we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. They run around a couple of weeks. That does take us more or less to the closing days of August. Um, have a look at the Beijing Climate Centre as well for the next 40 days. No update uh, with CFS again today. They haven't updated CFS since Monday at, uh, no, we're not sure what's going on. Maybe the people who um, put the charts have gone on holiday or something. But anyway, hasn't had an update uh, with CFS um, for a couple of days. They will get it updated in the end. I suspect there'll be an update before the end of the week. But at the moment, uh, no updates currently at uh, CFS. So we're going to have to look at the Beige Climate Centre for extended uh, look in towards September. And that will be towards the end of the video. I just say that the Friday forecast has been released. So it's going to be an unsettled five days coming up. It's going to be showers or longer spells of rain. And particularly on Friday into the weekend, it's going to get very windy as well. It could be gale force winds uh, around Irish Sea coast. So rather autumnal five day forecast. Have a look at that when you're done with week. Send day video update. Uh, tonight we're going to have the uh, third update for the late summer bank holiday uh, weekend, although this video will cover that time frame uh, as well. Right, so we're going to start off with the NEO observed and forecast chart. This is just updated within around the last two minutes. Uh, this chart has just updated. So I'll talk you through what it's showing. The black line here shows where we've been with the NEO. The red lines are the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the NEO to go. Uh, throughout this summer, really going back to the third week of April, we have been in a prolonged negative phase of the North Atlantic Oscillation. So the last time it was notably positive with the NEO was just there in the third week of April. Uh, so since then, we've more or less been negative consistently with the NEO. At times lifting up towards neutral condition, just there around when we had the heat wave late in July, we actually popped up just onto the positive side of uh, neutral. But overall, over the past few months, from May uh, through June, through July, and into the first half of August, we have been uh, negative with the NAO. When you are negative, remember, it's just it's just reflecting the atmospheric state, it's not driving anything, you know, in its own terms. It just tells you what the atmosphere is doing. So when you're negative with the NAO, you've got a weakened uh, Azores high, and you will have a uh, weakened Icelandic low. Sometimes you actually have high pressure around Iceland and low pressure through the Azores. Not always, but sometimes times um, you'll have that. Uh, conversely, when you have a positive NEO, and that's kind of like the default state for the North Atlantic, really, the positive phase of the NEO is the default, essentially, where we have low pressure around Iceland and high pressure around the Azores. The contrast of air mass strengthens the zone of westerly flow, particularly in winter. A um, positive NEO is a mild westerly Atlantic driven signal. Not always, but most of the time, positive NEO uh, will be a mild westerly uh, prevailing southwesterly signal. So we've been negative with the NEO back to uh, May. We have had a very unusual uh, weather pattern through this summer. Where we are right now is just there. We are still negative with the NEO and the GFS ensembles are forecasting that certainly for the next sort of five, seven days we're going to stay negative with the NEO, though gradually inching our way back closer to neutral. It does look as though we will probably go onto a positive side of neutral in around a week time. Where we go beyond that is very uncertain. These are individual members of the GFS ensembles and you will notice there's quite a spread there between these ensemble members just here that are taking the NAO properly into positive territory. The most positive it would have been, if that comes off, it would be the most positive the NAO has been since the third week of April. But there are a fair few members of the GFS ensembles that are actually keeping the NAO in more negative territory. So there's a bit of a split there uh, within the GFS ensembles as we look ahead to the end of uh, August. Certainly for a few days, certainly it looks like the NEO is going to go positive. But we've been here before. We did um, sort of rise up with the NEO into slightly positive territory just there, as I say, back around when we was having the heat wave back in July. But then it just fell back again. So this does happen when you're in these negative phases that the 
the Atmosphere will try to get itself back to its default setup. And as I say, a positive NAO is the default setup uh, for the North Atlantic. So all the time, the Atmosphere will be trying to return itself to its natural state, uh, which is a positive NAO. So that it might be that's all that's happening here that the that the actually will try to get back towards um a positive LEO type setup and will do so probably uh for a few days before then starting to fall back however if this is a definitive shift into a positive LEO so if we're going to go up to that sort of level uh for the end of august and into september and manage to stay there uh for um for a few days or weeks then we will start to see a strengthening of the azores high and at this time of year, strengthening of the, Azor, of the Azores high will typically bring a lot of dry, fine and quite warm late summer weather. So for late August and into September, we may be heading towards our typical sort of spell of warm, dry uh, late August, early September weather. But there is just enough of a split there within the GFS ensembles to suggest that this change to a positive NEO may not be definitive and may not last all that long. So we're going to have to keep a very close eye on that. Now, this is the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast chart. These charts are updating as I'm speaking, really, uh, at NOAA, although the AO still hasn't updated yet. So we will go with what it was showing uh, yesterday. Uh, so, the, again, Black line shows where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation, red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. As with the LEO, we've been in a prolonged negative phase of the uh, a prolonged negative phase of the Arctic Oscillation. We had appreciable levels of northern blocking. When the AO is negative, it tells you you've got high pressure up over the pole. When the AO is positive, you're going to have low pressure up over the pole. So this has been a summer that has had uh, considerable levels of northern blocking, often centred uh, around Greenland. Where we are right now is negative still with the Arctic Oscillation. And unlike what the GFS ensembles are showing, the uh, GFS ensembles for the Arc, uh, unlike what they're showing for the NAO, with the AO, the GFS ensembles are trying to keep the Arctic Oscillation in negative territory. So although we may see the NAO beginning to shift towards a more positive phase, it looks like the AO is going to stay negative right way through to the end of August. So expect to keep consistent Considerable levels of high pressure and blocking up over the North Pole as we look ahead towards the end of the month. It looks like it's the NAO that is possibly shifting a little bit, though how definitive that is and how long it lasts for is open to quite a bit of uncertainty. But it does look like the NAO is shifting a bit. The AO looks like it's staying stubbornly in a negative territory. We'll keep a very close eye on the AO and the NEO over the next few uh, days, weeks, and, of course, as we head towards winter, over the next few months. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's go to the of Buxton uh, today, which is the highest town in England, up there in Derbyshire. So the red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Buxton. You can see that over the next few days, we're going to be a bit cooler than average, really. A bit up and down to start off with warmer sectors and cooler sectors alternating but as we go through the weekend into next week we go for a few days of really quite definitively cooler than average weather beyond that into the final week of august we still have this warming trend appearing so the gfs ensembles are definitely showing a warming of the upper air temperatures there are a few really quite hot members of the GFS ensembles, these ones just here, are lifting things up to around 15 Celsius at 850 HPA. In late August, 15 Celsius at 850 HPA will probably be enough to still get you to 30 degrees, 86 Fahrenheit. So there are a few quite hot members of the GFS ensembles for this last week of August. However, the sort of broad thrust of the ensemble plume is lower than that. But nevertheless, still a warming trend, so we can expect, I think, that uh, through the final week of August, we are likely to see the uh, temperatures warming up. Unsell so weather over the next few days. So this precipitation spike here is associated with today's wet weather. That one there is Friday's 
uh, heavy rain and strong winds after that rather showery through weekend into next week and interestingly even in this warming period through the final week of august this period just here we don't completely lose the precipitation spikes so there are several of these gfs and some that are still keeping things quite unsettled not truly setting things down even into the last week of august um so it does look as though we will see a warming trend through the final week of August, but how settled, how much it settles down, still open to a bit of doubt. But I think we are going to shift towards higher pressure for the, for the last week of month. That's where I think this is going to go, that we will see the Azores high strengthening and bringing increasingly warm and probably increasingly dry weather through the last week of August. Temperature anomalies on the 14th to 22nd of August still forecast to be slightly cooler than average for the UK and for Ireland and precipitation anomalies on the 14th to 22nd of August overall a little bit wetter than average so it remains cool and unsettled in the week ahead. This is how the GFS is looking for Saturday. Low pressures out to the northwest of Scotland are usually deep for the time of year at Nine, 980 millibars bringing uh, strong winds and outbreaks of showery rain uh, across the country into Sunday again some shiny showers notice the isobars tightening further there through northern Ireland and southwest Scotland could, could become very windy with gale force winds maybe severe gales can't be ruled out for the far northwest of Scotland on Sunday uh, still unsettled on Monday although we're losing the wind that low pressure heads off towards the northeast of Scotland but still showery and quite cool through the early part of next week but then from wednesday through to thursday here we go the azores high begins to make its move a thousand thirty millibar area of high pressure sitting just to the southwest of ireland and the uk a definite strengthening of high pressure into the second half of next week high pressure well and truly takes over uh, so this is Friday the 23rd of August. We are back under high pressure. That will bring lots of dry, fine and warm conditions. Temperatures probably lifting into the, low, into the mid 20 Celsius by day. By night, the temperature could be a little bit on the cool side. Um, late August, early September, time of year when you can get warm days, yes. But nights can be quite chilly under high pressure. It will depend on the exact, uh, on the exact parameters within the atmosphere at the time. That's day 10, which is Saturday the 24th of August, and high pressure is well and truly in control, big time. 1,030 millibar of high pressure, more or less centred over top of the country. So this will be bringing a return of summer. We will have lots of dry, fine and warm, maybe even very warm uh, temperatures. Into the more extended range, we keep this high pressure sitting very close to us. This is a big, big area of high pressure that this particular GFS run is building in. It's getting the uh, central pressure of the high up to 1,035 millibars there by Sunday the 25th of August. That's going to take some shift in and uh, will bring lots of dry and fine harvesting uh, weather for the end of August with it. And we just keep this high pressure fest going actually into more extended range. We're up to Wednesday the 28th of August now, uh, which um, is 348 hours away, so it's a long way off. We are trying to uh, move this high pressure a little bit further north, and we're trying to take the high pressure up towards Greenland, uh, up towards Iceland and Greenland. Um, doesn't really come off to anything, and actually, we can just get high pressure very close to us as far as we can get to, which is Friday the 30th of August. If we keep those blocking signals going to the north, uh, so if we continue to keep the Arctic Oscillation uh, negative, as we see there, uh, which tells us we would keep considerable levels of blocking going to the north, then what could happen with this is that the high pressure could eventually start to ridge up towards Greenland, could eventually go north, and that would be the way that we would eventually break the high pressure down taking it up to Greenland and uh, possibly pulling in colder or cooler northerly winds and then maybe starting to bring low pressure in underneath it. That might be the way this breaks down. We'll have to wait and see. It just depends whether we keep those uh, those blocking signals going 
to our nor but it is interesting how the high pressure i mean it starts off there on the 24th of august and through the gfs when you see it gradually inches its way further and further north it doesn't quite make it up to greenland as far as we can go which is the 30th of august but it is trying to go in that sort of direction that's probably because there are still blocking signals continuing over uh, green remember high pressure will always try to reach to high pressure so if there's high pressure sitting uh, over greenland and up into the arctic this ridge will probably try to go north so that's one thing that we have to keep an eye on but as it is this final week of august is looking very very dry and potentially very warm indeed on this gfs run gem looks like that the canadian model is unsettled on saturday with showers or indeed longer spells of rain and as we go into next week we keep those low pressure signals going through the first half of the week before again signs of ridging building up from the south West doesn't make quite as much of this high pressure as the GFS does, but nevertheless, by day 10, which is Saturday the 24th August, it still it has us more or less under high pressure. It's not as strong this ridge as the GFS has it, but nevertheless, it's high pressure taking over. So we're going increasingly dry through next week and turning warmer as well. The wind is pulling in from the east or southeast, so that will drag up some quite warm air from central parts of Europe. Similar trends, just a little bit different in the detail ecm again rather unsettled on saturday with showers or longer spells of rain very windy potentially some parts of the country on sunday and then the low pressure clears away to the north through the early part of next week but still close enough to keep us cool and showery through the first half of next week and then here comes a high pressure in the second half of next week the changes around wednesday wednesday 21st of august that's around ch changeover day from low pressure to high pressure and as we go through next week, then we see the high pressure strengthening over the UK and much of Northern Europe as well. That's how you finish up with the ECM run. It's day 10. It's Saturday the 24th of August. We are under a big ridge of high pressure and that is keeping us dry, fine and very warm. Let's have a look at the upper air temperatures. So there we are. Actually, not all that warm, really, uh, given we're under a ridge of high pressure. So that's the thing about um, late summer high pressure. You can look at it and think that it's going to be very warm or hot. But actually, the parameters in the atmosphere struggle a little bit to lift up the upper air temperature. But nevertheless, the sun still has a lot of power to it uh, in late August. So that would at least get you to the mid-20s Celsius if there's bags of sunshine lasting all day. Nights could be a little bit on the chilly side. But overall, this does look like we're shifting back to summer for the last week of August. Let's have a look at the ECM Ensemble for the next couple of weeks um uh, so this is how things looking in day at uh, day 10 uh from the Icelandic Met Office sector the 24th of August we have 23 members of the ECM ensembles with a ridge of high pressure over the UK and going to our north as well so obviously that could be quite settled we're going to be sending the jet stream northwards uh with that so that's taking us into anti-cyclonic conditions. We have 20 members of the ECM ensembles with a ridge centred over top of the UK. Jet stream will be up there somewhere. So again, high pressure in control. And then we have eight members of the ECM ensembles, which does include the ECM operational run that has this big ridge at day 10 sitting over and to the north of the country, bringing in these ECM winds. Only eight doing that. So it does tell us that this scenario that we see here from the um, ECM operation run at day 10 is not all that well supported from the uh, ECM ensembles. Actually, the, most of the ECM ensembles have the high pressure just a little bit further southwards in that kind of position. Still pretty good, still bringing uh, drier and warmer conditions, but maybe not quite to the same extent as today's ECM operational run. However, this is just variations of a theme. All models and ensembles seem to be shifting towards high pressure by day 10. Two weeks' time, which takes us to the end of August. We get to the 29th uh, of August, 360 hours away. These are the options that we've got. 16 members of the ECM ensembles there with, above, with a ridge of above average heights, sort of over just a little bit to the west of the country. That's mainly dry, fine conditions. 14 with a ridge extending in from the Atlantic into the UK and 
and they're going to Scandinavia, so obviously that's going to be very anticyclonic, dry, fine and warm. Tang down here have the high pressure just to the north of Scotland, so again, mainly dry and fine. And then a minority option, only 11, uh, that has low pressure in control for the end of August. It has this area of low pressure over to the west of the UK and bringing in west or southwest winds. So there is a minority option that by the end of August things are looking unsettled with low pressure in control. But most of these ensemble members uh, are suggesting high pressure continues. Although they are varying where that high pressure sits, they are suggesting high pressure continues pretty much to the end of the month. Right, we'll have a look at Beijing Climate Centre uh, next. So, um, again, these are 500 millibar heights broken down into 10 day periods. As I say, we haven't had an update from the CFS D2 since Monday. As soon as we get a, a CFS update, I'll bring it to you in uh, in a video. But at the moment, we've only got Beijing Climate Centre to deal with uh, for for September. So, uh, again, these are 500 millibar heights broken down into 10 day periods. The first 10 day period takes us from the 6th to 25th of August. Overall, the coming 10 days is unsettled with uh, low pressure still in. Control. Remember, this is a transitional period, so we're starting at this point quite unsettled, 16, but by the time we get through to 25th, we're probably under an area of high pressure. That takes us through to the next 10 day period, which is the 26th of August to the 4th of September. High pressure taken over, so high pressure then is sitting over and to the east of the country, well and truly in control, being dry, fine, and very warm conditions potentially for the end of August and into the start of September. The base climate centre then keeps that high pressure going into the next 10 day period. This is days 21 to 30. It's the 5th to the 14th of September. Still with that high pressure sitting there over top of the country. So this suggests that the first half of September could be dry and very warm. Very warm and dry conditions in the first half of September. If the Bayesian Climate Centre is right, what about the final 10-day period? This one taking us from the 15th to the 24th of September. It's days 31 to 40. Still having a ridge to our east, although it's weakening. Pressure looks like it's weakening out to the west of us. Uh, and then a ridge out towards Newfoundland. So what's probably going on there is that we're just gradually turning more unsettled then. That's the 15th, 24th of August. We're into the second half of... Uh, 15th, 24th of September, I should say. We're into the second half of the month. And I would think that what's going on there is that the high pressure is gradually being broken down and we're beginning to go into a more unsettled spell of weather for the second half of the month. As it, as, as it is as an anomaly, it isn't particularly unsettled, but it does suggest that there's a break, a breakdown taking place to the high pressure fest that we have in the first half of September. So dry, fine and warm for the first half of September may be hinting at turning a bit more unsettled around the middle of the month and into the second half. Finally, I just want to have a look at the tropical Atlantic. So uh, we did a video yesterday saying that been a pretty quiet start to this tropical storm and hurricane season in the uh, Atlantic Ocean. I explained the reason for that. Have a look at yesterday's uh, video if you want to know why it's been a relatively quiet start to the season. Uh, this is the uh, latest GFS run, so the run was just looking at, but what we're looking at here is kind of like the Northern Hemisphere uh, view. This at metroseal.fr. Don't often show you uh, this view, but that is kind of like the Arctic uh, area area just there. We've got Greenland there, so we'll have Canada over here. That's Scandinavia just there. That's a UK island there. Uh, let's change the colour. North America uh, and uh, down into the South America is actually uh, just there. We've got uh, central parts of Europe there, Spain and Portugal there. And if we go right the way down to the bottom of the chart, we can actually see the edges of North Africa. So that is sort of the edge of North Africa uh, just there. This is sort of a tropical Atlantic around here. What we need to keep an eye on is this, uh, let's just highlight it again, this uh, fifth, uh, this 1,015 millibar isobar just here. Along that and to the south of it, that's where we can start to generate 
first of all, just thunderstorms and little clusters of showers, but they can generate into areas of low pressure and eventually tropical storms as they drift out uh, with the trade winds, uh, with the with the trade winds across the tropical Atlantic. So keep a close eye on that 15 Celsius isobar. So as we run through the first part of it, you can see these little sort of kinks in that 15 Celsius isobar that are developing. For example, this one just here, that is probably a cluster of thunderstorms that's developing off the African coast and moving out into the tropical Atlantic. But no sign within the next week that um, any of those little kinks in the isobars are developing into areas of low pressure. So again, there we are. Uh, how far have we got to now? We're up to the 22nd of August and we see another little elongation in the isobars just there. Again, that will probably be a cluster of showers developing off this uh, African coast uh, just here. Uh, but if we go to the extended range, we might be seeing a few signs of things beginning to uh, get going a little bit in the tropics. Let's run through into, into the extended range. Remember, this takes us into the final week of August keeping a close eye so we have something that looks like it's developing uh, just there that's a disturbance area about 1015 millibar circular area that's a little area of low pressure that one doesn't actually develop into much but it does sort of well, there we've got two little areas so this is the 22nd of august we've got one little uh area there of low pressure another one is just there so it looks as though we're getting towards the final days of august things are just starting to move a little bit in the tropical uh atlantic no sign of a storm or a hurricane uh yet but as we get to the 30th of august which is as far as we can go we have another uh, area just there but looks like it would be probably just a cluster of thunderstorms but it might develop in something quite significant it looks like there could be a little area of low pressure over florida uh, as well maybe this is two weeks away so um just a suggestion maybe that things are going to start livening up through the last week of uh, august with these disturbance areas again there's no evidence that any of these are forming tropical storms or hurricanes uh yet it's a very long way out two weeks away but it certainly looks as though the disturbance areas might be starting to uh, get going a little bit through the last week of august that's just going to be something to keep an eye on perhaps as we get through towards the last week of the month and then maybe increasingly through september as we explained in yesterday's video we might start to see a ramp up through september possibly even into october right that's it for today's uh video i was just going to say about um patrons so if you would like to become a patron for gas if you're enjoying the uh videos then please can you send becoming a patron uh for gas we've got 64 patrons so far hello and a big thank you to our 64 patrons so if you'd like to become a patron gas you can come to gas patron page sign up for a patron account and you give an ongoing monthly donation to gas to help us pay the website and keep content online alternatively you can give a donation through PayPal. Big thank you to all of our patrons and all of our donors. Uh, you'll get a shout out in the videos if you want one. So big thank you to everybody uh, for doing that. Right, extended video today. Hope you found it interesting and informative. We will be back later on with a look at the weather for the bank holiday weekend. Of course, we did cover that. And if these models are right, we could well be looking at a classic dry and warm August back holiday weekend. But it's still a little way off. So have another look at it tonight anyway. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.